you know, normally I come on here and I'm full of energy and I talk about sports and I talk about jerseys and I talk about all things in between. Today I'm going to talk about something a little different. Um, also going to give you a little bit of an insight about something I have going on in my own life. But, um, as it's all over the news now, uh, former WCW and TNA star Shannon Spirelli, better known as Daphne, uh, ended her life the other night. Uh, she was on Instagram, Instagram Live, um, and I was alerted via a tweet that people needed to check in on her, and I jumped in, and uh, she was very distraught, was talking about ending her own life. Um, you know, it was just, it was, it was very heartbreaking to watch. I mean, it was heartbreaking to see, even if she'd have lived, it was still heartbreaking to see anybody at that point. It was very distressing. And, um, many of us that were in that chat and many of her peers and friends sent words of encouragement, um, tried to tell her her life means a hell of a lot. And to not do what she was talking about doing. Um, which, you know, it was, you know, what she mentioned, very last words, don't. My brain goes straight to Boston, which is Christopher Dolinsky to get checked for CTE. Um, you know, we, we, many of us tried to spread some goodwill to her in hopes that she would have that moment of clarity, you know. Um, meanwhile, our family was contacted. Uh, there were some issues with her address because she had apparently recently moved and not updated it. But um, while we were saying these words of encouragement to her, though, and when she finally cut the video, we all had the same hope, the same prayer, the same thought that, you know, we hoped and prayed that she would uh, have a moment of clarity and, you know, have that moment to where she just changed her mind and laid down and went to sleep. With intent to waking up the next morning, we'll let you know what tomorrow's another day. Unfortunately, she didn't. She ended her life. Um, was forty six years old, and I'm not going to come on here and say that Daphne was a close personal friend of mine, Shannon, whatever you want to call her. Um, I can tell you, I had many interactions with her on social media, and. Uh, she was a delightful person. She really was a wonderful human being online. And by all accounts of people that actually knew her, that wasn't just an online persona. I mean, she just really had had this wonderful soul vibe to her. And again, that's what many people, what people that knew her well are coming out saying is she was a wonderful soul. She was a beautiful human being. And I'm not just turning, talking uh, ethestically. She was a kind-hearted person. Her, her tweets to me were always very, you know, very pleasant, very, very genuine. And uh, sometimes I put some tweets out there to her that was, you know, my own issues in life. And she always had something nice to say. I mean, she was a, a just, a, as I said, a beautiful person inside and out. And mental illness is a bitch, guys. It really is. Mental illness is a absolute nightmare it is the hardest fight that we will ever mentally go through even physically because you know what i've suffered many physical scars in my time the physical scars heal the emotional ones don't always and you know the, these mental health battles that, that people go through i go through it myself i have bipolar disorder i have post-traumatic stress disorder i have anxiety depression there are points of life where you reach a stage of where you just want to say, fuck this, man. I don't want to keep this fight going on anymore. And I don't know what was going on in, in Shannon's life, in Daphne's life. Um, I know she certainly had some health issues due to, you know, uh, the wrestling injuries. I mean, I, I think that's where she was implying about donate my brain to Boston. Um, this, this business is rough, man. This business is rough. And... Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't know what she had going on in her life outside of what she put forth, but just understand that the people that smile the most and have the most to give are the ones with the most broken hearts. And that seemed to be Daphne. I mean, this woman 
never had a bad word to say about anybody. Always seemed to have a smile on her face. Always had pleasant things to say. But deep down her heart was broken. If we take nothing away from this. And what happened on Instagram the other night. And Daphne's tragic demise. Many, 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 many years before she was, you know, she should have gone. Use this as an example and look at next time you see somebody online crying out for help. I know it's easy for people to dismiss that. Oh, that's just somebody seeking attention and you know, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Don't always make that assumption. Social media is a very, very prevalent thing in this world nowadays and social media everything from political decisions to you know even their sports leagues that are driven by what social media happens i mean it plays a major impact in human lives and i know part of that is because you can be whatever you want on social media and nobody's any less for where for it nobody's any more uh, any less uh any less than knowing and some people cry out online like Daphne did on her Instagram because they don't know where else to go. I mean, some people, this is their platform. This is their, where they go to, to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, and somebody that's on here talking about ending their life on any form of social media, you know what, it, this may be their cry for help and they don't know where else to turn. And you know what, even if it is some kid or some, even some adult that, that is just seeking validation and they're not really intending on killing themselves and they're just doing this to get attention, so fucking what? So what? If you be nice to them, what, what did you lose? If you go on there and give them words of encouragement or have a discussion with them and make them feel a little bit better about their day, even if they're not thinking about that and they're just saying that to get people to talk to them, you know, again, what did you lose? So fucking what if they're not real? They're not serious. You know, you, you did a good thing. You put your best foot forward. You showed that you have compassion in the soul. And I'll tell you right now, I would 1,000% of the time rather give my kind words to somebody crying out for help online and find out it was bullshit and that they weren't really thinking about doing anything and just needed somebody to talk to rather than turn a blind eye to a video like what Daphne put up, what others have put up online, go to sleep and act like nothing's a matter and find out the next day they actually followed through. I mean, I'd rather be a sucker than, and I know people, oh, I don't want to be a sucker. I'd rather be a sucker than a, than a prick. But, you know, just again, don't, don't always rule out somebody crying out for help is, is seeking attention. She don't know what's going on in her life. You don't know what, what's going on in their existence. You don't know if they've reached that point of rock bottom. And that social media post was their way of crying out for help. I know what it's like to reach that point. And I know there's people that have varying views about suicide. I know what it's like to be at rock bottom mentally and emotionally. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. I mean, I was where Daphne was in my life more than once. And mercifully, it's been over 20 years since I've been at that point. Um, and I'm blessed with two amazing children and an amazing wife. And I've got reasons to live. And I would never, I won't do that ever again. But there was a period of my life to where I was at rock bottom. This was before social media really became a big thing. There was a point in my life where I actually had a suicide note written, which included instructions on what I wanted done in terms of distribution of all my remaining personal items. And I even had to plan on what I was going to do. I had a plan on how I was going to take my life. Quick, simple, and easy. I sat there 
And I... Thought. And then I had a moment of clarity. And I said to myself, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I doing this? I've got so much left left in life to offer. I lay down, I went to sleep, woke back up. Tomorrow was another day. Live to see it. But not everybody is has that moment. When they reach a point of no return, especially when mental illness plagues you. It's it's a damned it's it's the damnedest thing. Um I've had a couple of people I knew commit suicide in my life. Um I'm not going to say this guy was a great friend of mine, but he was certainly somebody I knew. Um, was a co-worker. Came to my apartment once. Didn't see him. Knocked on the door. Man, what's, what's going on? You know, I said, we weren't close friends, but we were, you know, we were casual acquaintances. And, you know, it was a pretty trustworthy fella. Knocked on my door and, uh, I said, come on in, man. Come on in and sit down. He's like, I need to talk to somebody. And he said, you know, I want to thank you for everything. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, thank me for what? You know, the, it's been cool to me at work. You know, you're a good dude. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Oh, you got to thank me for that. Yeah, you know, I sat and talked for 20, 30 minutes. Uh, said to me, hey, I got to go. But, you know, you take care of yourself, all right? Yeah, man, you do. You know, looking back, I, I, I was fucking 19 years old, 20 years old. I wish I'd have saw the signs. Well, the next day, went off on out. After he left my place, he went, I think, one other place. And he went back to his house and hung himself in a, in a tree in his yard. Like I said, if I could go back in time and have a discussion with him. And I was better at reading the room when I was fucking 20 years old than I and I, I was capable of reading a room then like I am now. <sighs> Things might have been different. I don't know. But just understand, though, guys, I said it, it's a very... Um, anytime somebody cries out for help, it's a very real thing, whether they're talking about ending their life and they're serious about it, or they just want somebody to talk to, give them that time, give them that shoulder, just give them them encouraging words. Cause you never know what those encouraging words could do to make somebody's life better. How your kind words could set them in the right path. Even if they're not serious about wanting to end their life and they just need to hear those words. It does nothing to, in terms of harm to say them and anybody listening to this if you feel like you're at rock bottom and you are at that point of no return where you just want to end it all for God's sakes reach out to somebody you reach out to me you reach out to the counselor reach out to the police Reach out to your loved ones. Reach out to somebody. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you a pussy that you feel that way. It doesn't make you a, a bitch or a, a coward or anything else. It makes you a very real human being with very real and raw emotions. And people get to that point more common than you think. It does not make you uncommon. So get that help. Get whatever help it is, whoever you trust most. And if you don't want to burden people that you don't, you know, the people that you know well, and you want to talk to a total stranger, my, my inbox is open anytime. Anytime, any place. If you need somebody to talk to, no judgment, hit me up. I, I relate to you in a lot more ways than you understand. And I will relate to you in ways that, that you know, get what I'm saying. Just understand your life matters. Your life matters. You have purpose on this planet. Everybody has purpose. You're no different. You were put here for a reason. 
And there is somebody out there, probably a lot of somebody's, whose lives will be a hell of a lot worse with you not there. I just know no matter how much you may think that the world can be an ugly place, and it can, it can, this can be a cold, callous, fucked up world. We, it, it can be a fucked up place. This world will knock you on your ass more times than, than Mike Tyson would in a 15 round fight. Don't let it keep you down. You always can get back up. And keep getting up and keep fighting. And again, if you need a, if you need somebody to tag in and help you carry that fight, you know where I'm at. Anyway, that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon.